All right. God is good. See, when you ignore the devil and you don't make it a big deal, you know, you stay calm. He hates that. He just wants you to get all worked up and we're not going to allow him to do that. Amen. We can't. Praise God. All right. All right. So this morning, we're going to go ahead and get started again. (laughs) Do apologize to those who have to hear it, the message uh, from the beginning. We were in a couple slides in, like Dominic was stating. Uh, but uh, let's see here. Okay. All right. Oops. Okay. So <laughs> the restart button works really well. <laughs> Praise God. All right. So um, we're going to be covering our uh, series on becoming an over uh, overcomer part four. Okay, so this is going to be our last uh, uh, part of the series, um, and then we'll be going on to another series starting next Sunday. Okay. All right. So whatever overcomes a man, to that he's enslaved. So Second Peter chapter two verse nineteen. We have been discussing this scripture throughout all of the uh, series and the parts. Uh, one through three, and we're going to continue that in verse four because this is where, the, you know, what we're basing becoming an overcomer on is this chapter in scripture. They become, and this is Peter talking about false teachers and preachers. They promise them liberty when then they themselves are slaves of depravity, which is sin. For by whatever anyone is to see a defeated and overcome to him to that person, thing, philosophy, or concept, he is continually enslaved. So let's be honest with ourselves. What are we enslaved to as Christians? Some of us, you know, and I've been there. Uh, you know, some churches te- teach their uh, t- uh, their uh, their congregation that they don't make mistakes, they don't sin, they're not enslaved to anything, and they walk. And you know what? Guess what? They're being lied to. Amen. They're being lied to. We're yeah. not. They're not being honest, and and that's what the word of God says. Well, the word of God says, "Confess your sins one to another, that you may be healed." Right? Man. So we, uh, it wouldn't be in that scripture if we were perfect, right? We wouldn't right. have that scripture. Man. So what has got us to the point of being enslaved, or to what has defeated or overcome us? Amen. What, what got us there? Was it a thought? Was it something we touched? Was it something that we seen? What got us there? What keeps us from overcoming? Is it complete ignorance or oblivious, being oblivious to your sin, to what you're enslaved to? Going, hey, I'm, you know what? I don't see nothing wrong with what I'm doing. I, I didn't even realize Come on. it was. Come on. Amen. How do we as Christians become an overcomer? These are questions that we must ask ourselves. Amen. We have to be honest with ourselves. As, as much as we want to say, hey, and, and the word of God does say to, that, that we should strive for perfection. And I'm, I'm not against that. And I believe we should. But we have to be honest in order to get perfect. We got to be able to identify what we're enslaved to. That's right. Amen. Amen. Things, philosophies, and concepts that we're enslaved to as Christians we discussed anger, fear, and depression in part one. And in part two, trust issues, addiction, temptation. Part three, bitterness and hate and sin. So part four, we're going to talk about the devil, okay? How do we overcome the devil? If born of God, I have the power. If born of God, I have the power to overcome all that is not of God. Amen. And we'll be uh, discussing a scripture that coincides with that. So let's go to First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Again, we're in, in Peter. Peter has, uh, you know, a lot of wisdom, a lot of knowledge. Uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, the word of God, I love how not just Peter, but Paul and, and all the great uh, authors of the word of God, how they put it together for us. So be sober it's being well balanced and self-disciplined. So let's read. Everyone have that uh, scripture? Amen. Amen. 
Be sober, well-balanced, and self-disciplined. Be alert and cautious at all times. Amen. Not sometimes, at all times. Why? That enemy of yours, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, fiercely hungry, seeking someone to devour. Amen. Okay, he's, he, he's like a, that roaring lion that you'll see on, on National Geographic. He's prowling, he's sneaking up, he's, he, he's, he's being very quiet. And he's not, he, I mean, he doesn't see his, his prey and run up to it right away. He slowly and carefully, methodically stalks his prey. Amen. He stalks it first. Amen. And if you notice some of the older, wiser prey, their, their ears start flickering, their eyes, they, they realize that, hey, so they, 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 they notice something. See, they're, they're sober and they're alert and cautious at all times because they know that lion's out to get them. That's right. They're well aware. See, what happens is there's the one who doesn't know. The, the one that's not being sober and not being alert and cautious is the one that ends up being dinner. That's right. Amen. And the lion knows this. He goes after the weak. He goes after the ones who are, are you know, that can barely walk or, or the young. And that's why a lot of, uh, in a lot of churches today, you see the, the uh, attendance of young people dwindling by the minute because the, the devil knows to attack the young mind because, you know what, they don't know better yet. That's right. Amen. It's sad, but this is why it's important as a church that we, as, as, as a body of Christ, not only myself, but every one of us that we engage with our young people, that we're constantly giving them the word and, and teaching them how to be sober, how to be alert, how to be cautious at all times. Amen. Amen. Verse nine, but resist him. Amen. Be sober, be alert, and cautious all time because the enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking whom someone to devour. But resist and be firm in your faith against his attack, rooted, established, and immovable, knowing that the same experiences of your suffering are being experienced by your brothers and sisters throughout the world. Amen. So you're not the only one that the devil has an attack on or has an, right. an agenda or a plan to attack. Right. Or he's already stalking you. Some of us feel like, and I've been there, I'm like, man, is the devil only after me? No, he's after everyone. This is what Peter's saying. All your brothers and sisters are going through. You do not suffer alone. That's Verse right. 10, after you have suffered for a, a little while, the God of grace who imparts his blessing and favor, who called you to his own eternal glory in Christ, will himself complete, confirm, strengthen, and establish you, making you what you ought to be. Amen. To him be the dominion, Amen. power, authority, sovereignty forever and ever. Amen. Amen. As you see here in, in this picture here to the left of your screen, you see that line. He's licking his chops. He's prowling. He's looking. <laughs> He's looking. He, you know what? Let me tell you something. The devil doesn't stop. Okay? That's right. He, he won't That's stop. Right. He's going to continue. If you think that the, you know, oh, hey, I, I'm victorious over that trial or, or whatever the devil came, that attack of the devil, be ready for another one. That's because right. he's relentless. He won't stop. That's right. Amen. First John chapter four, verse four. I'm going to be reading the Amplified Version. And when you've gotten there, please say amen. Amen. Greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. Little children, believers, dear ones, you are of God and you belong to him and have already overcame them, the agents of the Antichrist, because he who is in you is greater than he who's he, Satan, who is in the world. That's right, amen. Luke chapter 10, verse 17 through 20. Amplified version. And here we're, we're, we're learning how we overcome the devil. 
Yeah. Remember that greater is he that is in you than he, Satan, that's in the world. No. You got to believe that. Because when he comes and he attacks you, you got to know you have authority over him. That's right. Amen. He is powerful, but you have authority over that power through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. When Jesus died on the cross, guess what? We got that authority. Luke chapter 10, verse 17 through 20. The 70 returned with joy saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Hallelujah. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. Listen carefully. I have given you authority that you now possess to tread on serpents and scorpions and the ability to exercise authority over all power of the enemy, Satan. And nothing will in any way harm you. And verse 20, nevertheless, I like the way he puts this. Do not rejoice at this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are recorded in heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. Overcoming the devil. Here we have the Lord Jesus saying, Man. I watched Satan. And he says, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. Listen, I've given you authority to tread on the serpents and scorpions. <laughs> God has given us the authority over Satan, over the devil. Amen. Amen. So a lot of times, you know, I and, and I've heard this from many, many Christians. Oh, she's a witch. I'm going to stay far away from her. He's a Satanist. Oh, my gosh. And you're a Christian? Shame on you. You know what? You have authority over not it's only not the demons that are in them, but over every demon, every devil Amen. that the Lord Jesus gives to us. He says in verse 20, nevertheless, do not rejoice in this that the spirits are subject to you. They're subject to us. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. And it's a believing and understanding that that's the case. It doesn't matter what it is. That's right. Amen. And sometimes what happens is we don't, it's either we don't have the knowledge or the understanding or we forget. And that's what the devil wants. He wants you to get in an idle mind, uh, an idle state of mind, to forget the word of God. So when you are attacked, you forget about it. Amen. James chapter four, verse seven through ten. Okay. Here, James is talking about how we overcome the devil. When you found that scripture, please say amen. Amen. James chapter 4, verse 7 through 10. Amen. Amen. So submit to the authority of God, resist the devil, stand firm against him, and what? He will flee from you. Amen. Hallelujah. Resist. He will. It didn't say may. It doesn't say here, and he may flee from you. No, he will flee from you. So, get, so submit to, the, to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Verse 8, come close to God with a contrite heart, and he'll come close to you. Amen. Amen. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your unfaithful hearts, you double-minded people. Be miserable and grieve and weep over your sin. Let your foolish laughter be turned into mourning and your reckless joy to gloom humble yourselves with an attitude of repentance and significance insignificance in the presence of the lord and he will exalt you he will lift you up and he'll Hallelujah. give you a purpose amen amen submit yourselves before the lord before god and resist the devil ephesians chapter 4 verse 27 talks about an important part of, of, of our Christian lives. We have an enemy that we're all aware of. That's right. Okay. Why do we as Christians give the devil an opportunity? Come on. That's right. Why do we do that? Here in Ephesians, okay, chapter 4, verse 27 says, and do not give the devil an opportunity to lead you into sin by holding a grudge or nurturing anger or harboring resentment or cultivating bitterness. And uh -huh. here, it, uh, Paul's, Paul was talking about anger. 
That's right. And the previous scriptures. He was talking about be angry and sin not. And he says here, and do not give the devil an opportunity to lead you into sin by holding a grudge or nurturing anger or harboring resentment or cultivating bitterness. These are things that are common in the church today. Amen. Give the devil an opportunity. Oh, he didn't shake my hand. Oh, you didn't even look. Ah, you just gave the devil an opportunity to lead you into sin. By holding the grudge, See, and this is what the Paul's Paul said. He's saying to lead you into sin. Here, you're giving them an opportunity to do that. Don't do that. Ephesians chapter six, verse eleven. Amen. The, the word of God. Listen, there there was many many scriptures, right? So I picked a handful of them that coincided with the uh, title of our, our our of our series here, becoming an overcomer, and overcoming the devil. Okay. But here we have Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11, and we've heard this scripture many times before. Put on the full armor of God, for his precepts are like splendid armor of heavily armed soldier, so that ye may be able to successfully stand up against all schemes and strategies and deceits of the devil. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Excuse me. You don't want to be deceived. You don't want schemes or strategies. You need to put on the full armor of God. Amen. The whole armor of God. The full armor of God. See, this is what happens a lot of times with these Christians. And I'll be I'll be real. The devil will attack you when you least expect it. And if you don't have your armor on, guess what? You're going to fall victim to his scheme or his strategy or his deceit. Because you don't have the full armor on. Amen. We, ought, we as Christians should always put that full armor on. And you go, Brother Nate, what are you talking about, full armor? We're talking about spiritual That's right. armor. Amen. We talked about this in, previous, in a previous sermon about putting on the armor, what, what the definitions were of each. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8 through 10. Jesus destroyed the works of Satan. That's right. Amen. And this scripture here, and it, coincidentally, I, I was talking with dad at, at lunch, uh, brunch last Sunday, and, and I had this scripture, and, and he brought this up. And, and you know what? I, when I read it, I decided to do some research on Google. I wanted to see if there was any commentary on this scripture. You, you want to know something? He's agreeing. He's saying amen. <laughs> I couldn't find maybe but one. Come on. All I found was John 3.16. But they're not reading John chapter 3 verse 8 through 10. So let's read it. The one, and he's, he's talking about the, the believer here, the one who practices sin, separating himself from God and offending himself by acts of disobedience. I like how it breaks it down to also indifference. Come on. Or, ooh, rebellion. Amen. Rebellion is a sin. And here, I like how it says even indifference. Oh, uh, I don't believe that scripture. Uh, no, that's not for me. I, I, I'm, and you rebel against it, you are sinning. You are practicing sin by rebelling against the word of God. So when you hear the word of God being preached, when I hear the word of God being preached, and if I am rebelling or if I'm going in, being indifferent, going, oh, I don't, I don't believe that's what it says. Be careful. Right. It's of the devil. Amen. And it takes his inner character Amen. morals and values from him not God, for the devil has sinned and violated God's law from the beginning. The Son of God appeared for this purpose to destroy the works of the devil. Amen. So if Jesus destroyed the works of the devil, why do we continue in the works of the devil? Amen. Or to do the works of the devil? That's right. No one in verse 9 is born of God, deliberately, knowingly, and habitually practices sin. Come on. Because God's seed, his principle of life, the essence of his righteous character remains permanently in him 
who is born again, who is reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renew and set apart for his purpose. And he who is born again cannot habitually live a character characterized by sin because he is born of God and longs to please him. Underline that word, those words. Amen. And longs to please him. See, when we want to please ourselves, we're not pleasing God. Because it's all about us. Like the word of God talks about selfish ambitions. You pray amiss because you have selfish ambitions. It's all about you. Come on. That's right. Amen. By this, the children of God and the children of the devil are clearly identified. Wow. Wow. Hallelujah. Wow. Wow. John just put it straight. I, you know what? Listen, and I understand why this is. I, yeah, I've really never. Re, I, I'll be honest with you. I don't think I've heard a sermon on this scripture. That's right. Amen. My entire life. <laughs> because people don't want to hear that. That's right. The word of God says you will know the truth, and the truth will what set you free. Hallelujah. Here's how we become free. And this is so important for us, and important for me, that we understand that by this, the children of God and the children of the devil are clearly identified by what? By doing the works of the devil or doing the works of God. What's the works of the devil? Habitually in practicing sin. Yeah. See, there's the unintentional sin, and there's the intentional sin. Amen. The intentional sin is what John's talking about here. He's talking about the habitually, the practicing of the sin that you do. Guess what? You're not of God. You are of the devil. I, yeah, that goes for me too. That's right. If I'm practicing sin and I'm habitually doing it, I'm not of God. As much as I could say, I am. That's right. Come on. It's true. Anyone who does not practice righteousness, who does not seek God's will in thought, action, and purpose is not of God. Wow. Let me read that again. Anyone who does not practice righteousness, who does not seek God's will in thought, action, and purpose, is not of God, nor is the one who does not unselfishly love his brother. Hallelujah. Hits home. It hits home. You, if, if any, and this goes for the whole Christian community, just not just us here Amen. today. If you're practicing sin, you're identified as being the child of the devil and not of God. This is what God right. said. Amen. Amen. It's so true. if we're practicing sin, you're like, Brother Nate, man, I, I, I was unaware of this. What do I do? The best thing to do right now is to repent. Amen. Amen. Turn away from it. Turn away because, listen, as Christians, we became Christians because we wanted to be Christ-like. We loved the Lord because he first loved us. We wanted to serve him and have a relationship with him. But the sin separates, separates us from God. That's right. And how can we obtain eternal life by doing the works of the devil? Come on. And I've said this and I'll say it again. There's more Christians today that are used of the devil in church than they are used of God. That's right. Amen. It's true. Because they decided it's not only just practicing, like you think, okay, oh, um, when, you, when you think of the common sins, like stealing, oh, you know, I, I don't steal, I don't lie. But what did the previous scripture talk about, about being indifferent or rebellious? Come on. Those are sins too. Amen. Amen. And if you're practicing those, you're, 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 you're not agreeing with the word of God. You're saying, oh, no, 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 that, no, I don't believe that. 
I, you know, I've run into plenty of people like that. You know what? I'm not saying that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm someone to put myself up on a, on a pedestal here, but I'm just saying, look, listen, when it comes to the things of God, you know what? When somebody op- opens the word of God and says, hey, brother Nate, look, look what the word of God says. I said, wow, thank you for sharing that with me. I, I take it with, with, with joy in my heart, not indifference or rebellion or disobedience. Amen. And if I continue to do that, I'm not doing the works of God. I'm doing the works of the devil. That's right. Amen. Amen. And even, huh, I was reading, and I, I don't want to get ahead of myself. I was reading in Jude. And that gets pretty deep as well. He talks about division. He yeah. talks about those who are divided. They're not of God. That's right. Amen. And division is, is one of the things that God hates. Discord and division is one of the six things God hates. Seven things that are an abomination, but there are six things that he hates. That's Amen. one of them. That's right. Amen. Amen. And that's the sin. And if you continually do that as a Christian, cause division or discord among the brethren, you're sinning. You're doing the works of the devil. Come on, preach it. It's true. So that means gossip, murmuring, complaining. You know, listen, anything that causes discord. That's right. And division. It is not the works of God, it's the works of the devil. Amen. How do I as a Christian overcome the devil? You may say, Brother Nate, how do I overcome the devil? How, how do I do that? Okay, so number one, like the scripture said in James, submit yourself to God. That's first and foremost. Amen. If you haven't submitted yourself to God, good luck. That's step number one. Amen. Again, it's like a recipe. Step number one says, hey, put the eggs in in a bowl. Why do I need the eggs? I don't need eggs. (laughs) I'm jumping to step number two and pulling flour. Well, guess what? You're not going to have a cake. You you know what? If you don't submit yourself to God, you can't resist the devil. That's right. So number two, put on the whole armor of God. The whole armor, the full armor, put it on. This is how you resist the devil. Number three, resist the devil, ignore him. That's right. Number four, don't give him place, an opportunity or an open door to attempt to complete his will for your life. Number five, quote scriptures of the word of God. And we see that here in Matthew chapter four, verse 10, how Jesus taught us a good example. This is why it's so important as Christians that we memorize scripture. Amen. Because you're not going to always have your Bible right by your side. You're not going to, you're going to be in the, you know, at a 7-Eleven getting some coffee or, uh, oh, excuse me, I mean Starbucks. (laughs) Getting your coffee and all of a sudden you're getting attacked. And you don't have your Bible with you. You got to be able to use some scripture. In Matthew chapter 4, then Jesus said to him, go away, Satan. For it is written, forever remains written, you shall worship the Lord your God and only him, uh, serve him only. Then the devil left him and the angels came and ministered to him. Amen. Amen. Let me read that. Amen. Then Jesus said to him, to, to the devil, go away, Satan. See, we have that same authority. That's right. Amen. That same authority to tell the devil, go away. Leave Amen. me alone. Amen. For it is written and forever remains written, you shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Amen. And I like what verse 11 says. Okay. We got cause and effect here. We, we, got, we got the effect that the devil now leaves him after he tells him. You notice it doesn't say the devil stuck around and kept pastoring him. Come on. Come on. But see, we got to learn how to use the scriptures. We got to memorize those scriptures. Hallelujah. So when that thought comes to your mind. That's right. And it's not of God. Amen. You got to be able to use some scriptures. Hallelujah. Like I'm feeling defeated right now. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. I'm more than a conqueror through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. No weapon formed against me shall prosper, yes. devil. That's right. You know, liar. And you say it with boldness. You say it with authority. You know, a police officer, when he goes and, and, and he's dealing with somebody who's being insubordinate and who's being disobedient, he doesn't sit there and just talk to him. Oh, yeah, hey, Sonny, will you just calm down? No. 
He says, put your hands up right now or I'm going to shoot you. You're like, whoa, this guy means business. That's how we have to be with the devil. That's we right. got to show him that we mean That's business. Right. Amen. Amen. There's times where I, trust me, I screamed at the devil. I said, you're a liar, devil. That's I right. rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Amen. I even started stomping my foot on the floor. Let me stomp that devil on his head. Hallelujah. Have that authority in Christ Jesus, through Christ Jesus. Amen. Defeating the enemy, exposing and overcoming the strategies of Satan. This is how we do it. This is how we overcome. Amen. Now here's some good news. The promises of the overcomer. Amen. What the Lord promises to you as an overcomer, okay? Not as a defeated or an overcome person, but an overcomer. Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 11. I've read this scripture previously, and I believe it was part one or two. When you found that scripture, please say amen. 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 But the Lord is with me as a dread champion, one to be greatly feared. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble and not overcome me. That's right. Amen. They will be completely shamed for they have not acted wisely and fa have failed in their schemes. Their eternal dishonor will but never be forgotten. Amen. Hallelujah. So when those who persecute you and reject you and hate you, falsely accuse you. Remember the Lord is with you as a dread champion. That's right. Hallelujah. And your persecutors will stumble and not overcome you. Amen. They'll Amen. be completely shamed. They will, and, and, and for they have not acted wisely. And, and you know what? They failed in their schemes. Come their on. eternal dishonor will be, be never for be forgotten. Why? Because you have done the right thing. You have over, not be overcome with evil, but you overcame evil with good. Yeah. Because when your brother or your sister hated you or hates you, you instead, you love them. Amen. John chapter 16, verse 33, Amplified Version. These are promises. Amen. Hallelujah. I was impressed by the number of scriptures that the Lord and the word of God promises us that if you overcome, you're going to be, you're going to have eternal life. And let's go into every, each one here. John chapter 16, verse 33. I have told you these things so that in me, you may have perfect peace. Amen. In the world, you will have tribulation and distress and suffering, but be courageous, be confident, be undaunted, be filled with joy. Why? Hallelujah. I have overcome the world. That's right. Amen. And if we're heirs of Christ, we too have overcome the world. That's right. All you got to do is believe it, right. receive it, act Amen. on it, make it a lifestyle. Hallelujah. First John chapter five, verse four through five. And do you recall at the beginning how I read that statement that if you're born of God, you, you're going to be an overcomer. This is where the scripture is coming from. First John Amen. chapter Amen. five, verse four through five. When you have that scripture, please say amen. Amen. These are scriptures. Let me tell you something. If you are a depressed Christian, for any reason or purpose, you need to read the word of God. That's right. And, and if anything, jot these scriptures down and you go to them. Amen. Amen. First John chapter 5, verse 4 through 5. For everyone born of God is what? Victorious, Victorious. and overcomes the world. Amen. And this is the victory that has conquered and overcome the world. Our continuing persistent faith in Jesus, the Son of God, who is the one who is victorious and overcomes the world. 
Who is the one who is victorious and overcomes the world? It is the one who believes and recognizes the fact that Jesus is the Son of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Overcomers. Amen. For everyone born of God is victorious. So you go, hey, wait a minute, Brother Nate, I, I don't feel victorious. <laughs> What do I do, Brother Nate? I'm not feeling victorious. I don't always feel victorious. But I, I'm born of God. This is where you got to read this scripture, and then you know what? Get on your knees and start praying. Amen. That's right. Amen. And say, hey, Lord. Yes. You know what? And listen. Also, tell that lying devil That's right. that you have authority over him and That's that right. you, you have victory you in the name of Jesus, God. through the Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Yes. Amen. James chapter 1, verse 12. And James here, he says, Blessed, happy, spiritually prospered, favored by God, is the man who is steadfast under trial and preserves when perseveres when tempted, for when he has passed the test and been approved. He will receive the victor's crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Hallelujah. Yes. Let me read that again. I don't think some of you got it. Blessed, happy, spiritually prosperous, favored by God, is the man who is steadfast under trial and perseveres when tempted. For when he passed the test and been approved, he will receive the victor's crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Revelations chapter 2, verse 7. The promises of an overcomer. Amen. When you overcome anger, when you overcome bitterness and hate, when you overcome sin, when you overcome addiction, when you overcome the devil, when you overcome lust, when you overcome pride, Amen. these are the promises to you as a Christian, as a believer. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 2, verse 7. He who has an ear. How many of us have ears? Amen. How many of us can hear with those ears? Amen. Let him hear and heed to what the Spirit says to the churches. Heed. Hear and heed. Do. Amen. To him who overcomes the world through believing that Jesus is the Son of God, I will grant him privilege to eat the fruit of what? The tree of life. Hallelujah. Which is the paradise of God. That's right. Amen. To him or her who overcomes, I will grant to eat from the tree of life, which is the paradise of God. I think I need to read it again. To him who overcomes, I will grant to eat the tree of life, which is the paradise of God. Amen. To Amen. him who overcomes. That's right. Amen. Revelations chapter 2, verse 11. Overcoming sin, overcoming the devil, overcoming it. Listen, there's a lot of things as Christians we have to overcome. That's right. Yes, That's including true. corrupt communication. Come on. We got to overcome that. Revelations chapter 2, verse 11. He who has an ear... Again, <laughs> lay him here and heed to what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes the the uh, he who overcomes the world, believing that Jesus is the Son of God, will not be hurt by the second death, the lake of fire. Amen. So this is a promise to those who overcome. In Revelation chapter two, verse eleven, he goes. See a couple more verses down. <laughs> It, it goes in again to say that he who overcomes will not be hurt by the second death. That's a promise. Right. Amen. But guess what? You have to be an overcomer. That's right. Amen. We have to overcome. We cannot well, be overcome. Yeah. Say, oh, if you've been overcome by sin, 
if you've been overcome by the devil, you are going to, you know, eat from the tree of life. No. It doesn't say that. That's right. Revelation chapter 2, verse 26. Here's another promise. And he who overcomes, and he who keeps my deeds, doing that, doing things that please me, until what? The very end. The very end. Amen. To him, I will give authority and power over the nations. Hallelujah. And he who overcomes, and he who keeps my deeds, doing things that pleases me until the very end to him, to her, I will give authority and power over the nations. Man. Revelations chapter three, verse five. And we have a lot of scriptures here in Revelations. That's the end of the word of God, right? That's the, the last chapter, the last book. And it's talking about the end. That's right, amen. And we're talking about, see, listen, you and I as Christians, we can go, oh, I'm an overcomer now. I've overcome it all. That's great. But continue to overcome until the very end. That's right. Amen. Revelations chapter 3, verse 5. He who overcomes will accordingly be dressed in white clothing. And, will, and I will never blow out his name from the book of life. The overcomer. And I will never blot out his name from the book of life, and I will confess and openly acknowledge his name before my father and before his angels. Revelations chapter 3, verse 21. Go down again. And, they, and, they, and these are continuous promises of the overcomer. This is what you're like, you know what, Brother Nate? It's, it's difficult sometimes. It is a challenge to overcome. You don't know what I'm going through. I, perhaps I don't know what you want to do. But what we have to do as Christians, look, this is this is for the overcomer. This is not for the overcome. Those who have right. over, been overcome or enslaved. Amen. This is for the overcomer. Revelation 3, 21, he who overcomes, I will grant to him the privilege to, set, to sit, excuse me, beside me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down beside my father on his throne. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He who overcomes, not the one who is overcome, not enslaved to sin, not enslaved to addiction, not enslaved uh, to the devil, not enslaved to the things of this world. Amen. Enslaved to a bad attitude. Come on. Sometimes we got to ask Come ourselves on. if we have a godly attitude or not. That's right. I'll tell you one thing. There's times where I'm like walking around and I, all of a sudden I, I realize I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. That's not of God. Good That's attitude. right. Man. Well, I rebuke you. I, you know, get out of here. That's Leave right. me alone. Devil. I, I, you know, I just start rejoicing, praising God, start singing a song. All of a sudden that attitude leaves me. That's right. Amen. Revelations chapter 12, verse 11. We will yeah. overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our Hallelujah. testimony. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And they overcame and conquered him because of the blood of the Lamb and because of the word of their testimony. How many of us have good testimonies? Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. For they did not love their life. Oh. Oh, God, Lord, you didn't want me to love my life? You know what the Lord is saying? From a selfish ambition. That's right. It's all about me. And I, oh, and, and, and you know what? You tend to yourself more you do than, to, than you do to souls. That's right. You do. You tend to yourself more than you do the will of God or the purpose of God. And renounce their faith even when faced with death. Let me reread that. And they overcame and conquered him because of the blood of the lamb 
And because of the word of the testimony, for they did not love their life, and they renounced and, and they renounced their faith. They did not do that. They did not love their life and renounce their faith, even when faced with death. Hallelujah. Overcomer. Uh, you know what? Listen, that's even overcoming the bullet, overcoming the knife, or okay, overcoming whatever it is that they're going to use to try to kill you as a Christian. You didn't love Hallelujah. your life more. You did not renounce your faith because the gun was to your head. You were an overcomer of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Revelations chapter 21, verse 7. The promises of our overcomer. These are the promises that the Lord gives us if we overcome. And you know what? Listen. Listen, I'm going to tell you like this. How many of, how many of us know the NFL, the football league, NFL, professional football league? How many of us know? Do you realize that not every football player makes it? who plays in high school, college. And they try really, really hard. See, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shine to the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father. So listen, it, it takes that special person to, to be able to become a pro football player. You got to be superb. Amen. You got to be beyond. You got to be a, a beyond average. You got to go, you got to be at the tip top, man, the fastest, the quickest, the best hands, the, you know, you got to be agile. You got to, you know, have, have the skill set to keep up with the other pro football players. Amen. And this is so important for us that they have to, let me tell you something. I, I've watched interviews with these pro football players and you know what they've said? That they had to overcome the, the obstacles situations they didn't have money to join the football team they had to go out there and mow lawns they had to go out there and earn their money their mom was working three four jobs they had to raise their own family and they, they came up and you know what they had to overcome those things they had to go to college they had to figure out how did they get into college they had to overcome that obstacle they wouldn't let them in but they kept fighting they didn't give up they kept on fighting they said oh, you know what i'm gonna overcome this i'm gonna get into college i'm gonna be a pro football player yeah. and they got into college and you know what guess what they were struggling with academics but you know what they, they got the tutors they they did what they overcame that hey i don't know much about math but i'm gonna get me a tutor i'm gonna overcome that problem that issue that's right and they graduate from college and they, guess what? Now they, they, they've been in the football program and they've done everything their coach said. They weren't disobedient. They weren't insubordinate. They weren't indifferent. They weren't rebellious. They, these guys said, hey, whatever you say, coach, I'm going to do because I want to be a pro football player. Amen. I want to be the best player. Amen. I want to be able to make millions of dollars to play a football game. That's right. And they had to overcome all these obstacles, these situations. And then come draft day, they're like waiting patiently. And they have to overcome that as well. Am I going to get drafted? And at the end, because they overcame and they continued, listen, was it easy? Absolutely not. I'll tell you right now, anyone who plays in a professional world, they become professionals. It's not easy. It doesn't come easy. So when we overcome these things that enslave us, whatever it may be, there's going to be a reward. But see, here's the thing. There are people, individuals who want to be pro football players, but the problem is they never became a, football, a pro football player because they didn't overcome their obstacles. Amen. Yeah. They caved into it. They became enslaved to it. They became victims to it. They chose, they made that decision. That's right. So we as Christians have to go, hey, you know what? Listen, I refuse to be a victim. I refuse to be enslaved to sin or whatever it is, any concept, you know, philosophy or thing or person. That's right. I refuse that that person doesn't like me. I refuse to allow them to enslave me to bitterness and hate, to a grudge. That's right. Amen. I refuse. I love on them and I pray for them as if nothing ever happened. That's right. It's Amen. to the overcomer that's going to win that get the crown of life. That's going to eat of the fruit of the tree of life. 
Hallelujah. Revelations 21, verse 7, he who overcomes will inherit these things and I will be his God and he or she will be my son and daughter. That's right. Amen. Overcomer. Hallelujah. See, it's, it, it's, it's okay for us to want and have a good desire and, a, and our intent is good. But brother Nate, you don't know the intent of my heart. You're absolutely right. I don't. But the word of God does. And the Lord knows. Amen. But I'll tell you like this good old atheist said, hell is full of good intentions. It's not intentions that's going to get you to heaven. Good intentions. It's doing the will of the Father. Right? It's by being obedient, being an overcomer. Amen. By being obedient. Amen. By being submissive to God. Right? Being submissive to God and then resisting yeah. the devil. We got to yeah. overcome these things. If we want to inherit, if you want to inherit eternal life, you, I need to be an overcomer. That's right. Amen. Don't quit. Don't give in. You're an overcomer. Amen. We're, if we're born of God, we can overcome. Hallelujah. See, on our own, when before we before we became Christians, before we became a believer, we couldn't overcome these things on our own. These obstacles, these things that enslaved us. It was through the Lord Jesus Christ being born of God. Now we're able yeah. to. See, so what does that mean? That means that you and I have a choice to be an overcomer. That's right. We have a choice. We ha we have it. We have it at our fingertips. The, the choice to go. I, I want to be an overcomer, and I, and I will be an overcomer. That's right. Amen. Christ, and I'm going to overcome any obstacle, Amen. any situation that is enslaving me, that's overcoming me. Praise right. God. Praise Amen. God. Amen. But I just got to act on the Word of God. Hallelujah. See, don't just be hearers of the Word, but be doers of the Word. And see, listen. Why do we go through the motions? Why do we go through the routines and rituals? We are wasting our time if we're not being obedient to the word of God. Right. Amen. Amen. It's all for naught if we're not being obedient to the word of God. That's it's right. all for naught if we're not being an overcomer. Amen. It's true. Overcome evil with good. Don't be overcome with evil overcome evil with good yes. and it contradicts our, our our human mind our carnal mind right because in our carnal mind we're saying wait a minute this person's doing me evil what do you mean do them good see the carnal mind is enmity against god it doesn't understand the things of god so you have to put on the spirit mind the mind of the spirit and you got to go ah that's why your eyes are open now amen this ain't about me and my feelings. That's right. Like they say, get caught Amen. up in all your feelings. That's Stop right. getting caught up in all your feelings and get caught up in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. That's right. That's what the problem That's right. is. We're too emotional. We get caught up in our emotions instead of in the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit and, and, and speaking in tongues and praising and worshiping right. God. Sure. Instead, we get so caught up and that's what the devil wants. He wants you caught up in your emotions. Amen. Oh, well, he did this. She did that. He said that. He said this. And oh, look at that. Look at that. Look, stop. That's what the devil's plan is, to distract you. That's right. Amen. He, he wants you, your emotions to run so high that you forget right. about God. That's right. And trust me, he'll get you there if you let him. That's right. You got to overcome and be an overcomer. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise On a God. daily basis. On a daily basis. Praise Not every Sunday basis, not on every once a month basis, not once a year basis, on a daily basis. That's right. When you identify, listen, you're not a bad person or a bad Christian if you go, hey, wait a minute, and you identify a, 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 a situation or an issue that's enslaving you, that has overcome you, you're not. Well, you know what? What makes you not such a good Christian is if you, if you ignorantly continue to do what you're not supposed to do. You go, okay, I have a ball and chain on my, my ankle. I'm not going to do nothing about it. 
Come on. I'll believe it there. And then That's we blame right. God and we blame everybody else. Come on. And that doesn't, that, that's not what God wants us to do. Amen. He wants us to be overcomers. Yes. He's yes. given us the authority. Yes. He's given us the power to do yes. so. Amen. Yes. Let's use it. Hallelujah. Amen. Go ahead, Dad. End us in a prayer. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for what you've done today and given us this once again, Hallelujah. another day, O oh Lord, to come before your presence with songs and worship. And we have, Lord, heard uh, your word, Lord. We have understand that your word is true, Lord. And we have, thank you for the word of God. We thank you that we are overcoming, Lord. And we are overcomers, O oh Lord, through the powerful name of Jesus Christ. The devil's defeated. The devil's a liar. And Father, we thank you, Father God, for yes. your truth yes. of your word today has come to our hearts. So, Lord yes. God, once again, yes. and Lord, help us Eco continually us. to put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand against yes. the wiles of the devil. Yes. And the God above all, we take the shield yes. of faith, which is able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked, Lord, in yes. Jesus' name. Thank you, Father God. We love you. We appreciate you. And we give you the glory and the honor, Father God, for all you've done and you've given us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Drench my soul as mercy and grace unfold. I hunger and thirst. I hunger and thirst. With arms stretched wide, I know you hear my cry. Speak to me now, speak to me now, I surrender, I surrender, I want to know you more, I want to know you more, I surrender. I surrender, I want to know you more, 
Spend our lives getting to know you. Yes, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, so praise constant, God. Lord. You, Beyond comprehension, Amen. Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Mm. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, we surrender to you, Lord. Hallelujah. Sing it with me. I surrender. We give up all. I surrender. Yes. I want to know you more. I want to know you more. I surrender. I surrender. I want to know you more. I want to know. I surrender, I want to know you more, I want to know you more, oh, I give it all to you, Lord, everything that I have, everything that I have, everything that I have, I give it all to you, Lord. Like a rushing wind, Jesus breathe with that. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way. In May, like a rushing wind, Jesus breathe with that. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way. Like a mighty storm. Like a mighty storm, still within my soul. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way. In the I surrender. I surrender. I want to know. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank Hallelujah. God for your mercy. For here. Thank God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. You. Hallelujah. Let's just take this last moment of service today to just raise our hands Thank you, Jesus. and just praise Him. Thank you, Father. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, we know You're always with us, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Father. Beneath the surface of my anxious imagination, back into calmness. That is found in you alone. 
It washes over every doubt, every imperfection. Jesus, your presence is the comfort of my soul. There's nowhere I'd rather be when you're singing over me. Oh, I just want to be here with you. I'm lost in your mystery. I'm found in your love for me. Oh, I just want to be here with you. Here in the waiting, I'm not worried about tomorrow. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. No need to focus on the things I can't control. Oh, my attention on the wonder of this moment. Jesus, your presence is a comfort of my soul. There's nowhere I'd rather be when you're singing over me. Oh, I just want to be here with you. I'm lost in your mystery. I'm found in your love for me. Oh, I just want to be here with you. Oh, I just want to be here with you. Yes, Lord. So let all that I am be consumed with who you are. Oh, the glory of your presence. What more could I ask for? So let all Be consumed with who you are. Oh, the glory of your presence. What more can I ask for? So let all that I am be consumed with who you are. Oh, the glory of There's nowhere I'd rather be than you singing over me. Oh, I just want to be here with you. I'm lost in your mystery. I'm found in your love for me. Oh, I just want to be here with you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen. So that concludes our uh, service for Sunday. Uh, we're grateful and thankful to have each and one of you here with us. We hope that you could join us again on Sunday, next Sunday. Uh, starting at 10 o'clock. Uh, we usually try to stop at 1130, but from 10 to 1130 uh, on Sundays. Um, for those of you who um, who don't have the YouTube subscription, um, I believe I've emailed it to majority of everyone. Um, if you don't have it, um, I'll, uh, I could send it to you via email. Um, also, um, 
we'll be more than likely sending out another link um, for, um, because I set up the YouTube under um, my personal uh, Gmail account initially, but it'll be set under uh, the uh, Grace on the Hill Church account, um, a Gmail account. Um, we were, I was just doing some test runs and, and happened to hit the, the wrong account. Uh, it's not that it caused any issues with anyone watching, but um, for, for administrative purposes, uh, for those uh, who I have editing the, uh, the sermons and so forth, they'll need to be able to access it without having to go to my personal. So um, God bless you all. We love you. And uh, we're grateful and thankful to have you all here. God bless you. Amen. Amen. God bless you.